so I've got the four square working and it is a massive I've got more footage than I know what to do with it and it and it got to the point I tried to edit it and I thought oh, it's ridiculous because there's only four things I did all right so a four square as you let, let me explain what a four square is so a 40 meter four square or any four square has four verticals and they're set and well the book says within a foot of the particular dimension we're after mine are accurate to within six millimeters a quarter of an inch and if you don't get the exact lengths right it's not going to work properly you think it's working but it's not so you've got four verticals you've got the, these phasing lines and you've got a control box and it, you can skew or or move your pattern like a yagi right, in four specific directions which means we've got front to back so if i'm facing uh, america's over there northwestish that means southeast i shouldn't be able to hear almost anything right the front to back is about 30 db so it's very strong okay so <laughs> the the book of words you know it says you know go down the uh least swr route however that is not accurate enough the most accurate way of doing it is with your fancy meter looking for x the reactance and getting it near as near zero as you can for the particular frequency that you're trying to tune this for so we're tuning this for probably 7.175 which means we'll still get a band spread you know, we've still got an swr curve but we'll tune it at 7175 but the point is, everyone needs tuned at 7175 with X equals zero or as close to it as we can. Now, to just make matters a lot worse, is that they don't recommend you put anything in the middle of a four square, which is why I've put a massive, great, bloody mast with a Yagi on the top. So to counteract that, we've not only put it in the middle of the four square, we've put it exactly in the middle of the four square so that it cancels out we're hoping and we've choked the hell out of all the lines that go anywhere near the tower to isolate the tower from the rest of the world right now i've got the meter and we've got a feed point here and we're going to have a look and see if we can get x equals zero or close to it uh right free i think we want so basically that this for x equals zero this is set at 7.02 which is no good because we're looking for 7.175. However, I've got something else to explain. We have to tune a four square a few percent below. So we're actually aiming at 7.07. .07. So, I mean, that's about a four or five hour job to take every vertical down, right? Tune it, micro, you know, I'm talking quarter of an inch, right? <laughs> half an inch, you know, 12 and a half millimeters so that we got the because you can't quite tell on an swr curve where x the reactance is best where it where it, so ignore swr you go down the reactance route that's all so that was day one okay so it's the next day martin and i we tune the verticals and uh frankly hang on look, dogs running around here we've still got problems on front to back but i have an inkling of what the problem is we took every phasing line off, dragged them in here, put the analyzer right, and on your meter, you can look for X like on, a, on, an, on an element, but on the coax with the open end, with not connected to anything, you can look at Z. And that's slightly beyond me right now because it's early Monday morning. I've got a ton of real work to do, production work here. And um, so we're after Z equals zero, right? And you go up and down the, the frequency, like between 7.150 to 7.2, and you find out where Z is the lowest. Now, all hours were within about 40 kilohertz, but I decided to tune every one identical to the shortest one. So I'm, I'm literally taking so off 0.83 two centimeters. Right? <laughs> you, uh, you know, you look at, you know, not even an inch. Which actually, in the scale of things, wouldn't bloody matter. But I did it anyway. So we got all the phasing lines cock on. 0.82716, half a degree of phase spread on a four square will not kill front to back by itself. But still the front to back wasn't right. I was getting this front, you know, it didn't matter if I went that way or that way, it was the same. Uh -huh. So then I looked at two other things and I fixed both of these simultaneously. So I don't know which one fixed it. 
The only thing we're doing is just double checking that the relays go clickety click. And one of the ways of doing that is I've got Martin's going to stay in the office, saves me bringing a laptop out and firing up the software and everything. I want to physically hear the relays click. I mean, you could do this with multimeters and everything, but let me just listen. All right, can you do the clickety click for me? And while I was at it, I checked the firing sequence on the software and I did actually make an adjustment. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the thing, the thing worked. Now I've done some, I haven't done much transmit testing, but I've done some basic testing. So, I mean, here is, here's a guy in London, about 150 miles away from me. The light, the, uh, the valves warm up uh, like car headlights, but I'm not having that because it's liable to blow the valves. Uh, the directly heated valves there. Uh, well, have a listen to this guy. Yeah, he's smiling. Yeah, he's smiling. Um, it's 8-4, and then I'm going to a concert. I think I'm a birthday present from my daughter. Going over to Leamington for a uh, concert there. Now, when I was talking to Tim Duffy, uh, K3LR, I'm, I'm going on, because, you know, <laughs> being a ham radio guy, I'm after gain, you know what I mean? So the gain on a four square, the outright gain, is three, four, five dB. And sometimes, to be honest, I can hardly tell the difference between the four square and a very good vertical. I've got 32 radials on my vertical. By the way, I took that down and up as well, just in case that was getting in the way and it wasn't. So at 3 dB, if you've got a plus 10, plus 15, 20 signal, 3, 4 dB, you can't boom and tell, right? But I remember Tim Duffy saying to me, the thing is, Callum, it's the front to back. Your reception becomes amazing. So, and sure enough, I have now front to back and front to side as well. By the way, what am I doing today is that we have a load of what they call Mark I signature ground plates. Signature 9, actually. So this is my Mark II. So you're not going to know the difference, so don't worry about it. But it doesn't fit. All right? The factory shipped me an upgraded housing. It's bigger now. This is slightly bigger than what it used to be. <laughs> they thought they were doing me a favour. Well, I got a load of Mark 1 plates they don't fit on, so all I've been doing is... Um, I haven't done that one yet. Oh, have I? Um, I've set up a jig here. It works really well, actually. Bit of WD-40. And we can take them out. Beautiful.
but before before I get all the way through, I flip it over because there's a bit of a a ring developing, and I take that ring out, and we end up with a perfect spec Mark II plate. Lovely. Then a little bit of Scotch bright. And that's what I've been doing. 